never consider myself the happiest person in the world. Before my chicken left me, I never even thought about happiness much. But then one day I woke up to find the empty spot where my car keys used to sit, and a note taped to a cereal box explaining that she just couldn't take it anymore, that she had to go find herself, and she was going to start looking in the Bahamas with the plumber, Ed. To keep my mind off things, I started spending long hours at my desk, hoping for the phone to ring. There's only one kind of dame who calls a private detective like myself, an unhappy one. Maybe I was hoping for some kind of solidarity, or maybe I was just wanting to hear a female voice. But one night, after a long night of dead air, the phone rang. Hello, private eye at your service. My husband's taken off. And you need me to find him for you? Let me tell you, sweet, or sweetheart. There's, or if he's gone by his own accord, there's nothing in the world I can do. No, I know exactly where he is. He's gone to find happiness. Miss? Yes, in Bhutan. So what do you want me to do? I need you to go find what makes Bhutan so happy. I just need to know what Bhutan has that I don't. Listen, lady, I'm no expert on happiness. I could find your missing dog valuables, but I'm the last person you'd want. I have to go. I'll contact you later. I promise I'll make it worth your while. I picked up this tome a few years ago, intending to give it to my chicken as a gag gift. I used to make fun of people who read stuff like this, and it must have been for good reason too. This guy, Eric Weiner, defined happiness as subjective well-being. Who does this guy think he is coming up with nonsense like that? Happiness is... is... Well, maybe I wasn't so good at defining it myself. So I kept reading. The agreeable sensations which spring from the enjoyment of good. Alright, I could dig this. Enjoyment, agreeable sensations. I remembered those. Like how it felt to pet my cat or kiss my chicken in the mornings. Well, I remembered some things. But now the question of what made the boot knee so happy. I skipped to the chapter on the boot knees. As it turned out... Me being a private detective in these times left me without two pennies to rub together, so visiting a country on the other side of the world was out of the question. I'd have to do my field research right here. At least, almost right here. I asked one of the locals if he'd take me up into the mountains. I think he understood me. At least, we started heading in the right direction. You see, Bhutan is a very mountainous region, very difficult to get into unless you were born there, or in India. Each visitor is assigned a guide, and you pay upwards of 200 smacks a day just to be there. I tried to approximate my trip to the mountains as close as possible to the Bhutan experience. I even had a guide. I didn't pay him, but at least he was there. There's probably something to that, this exclusiveness when you shut the whole world out. When you only got one national highway, you, got, you tend to be pretty happy. Which brings me to another source of irritation, traffic. Traffic makes people cranky. We have a lot of it here. Bhutan, they don't even have traffic lights. Not a single one. Maybe that stems from the Bhutanese respect for life. All sentient things. In Bhutan, dogs are the kings of the road. I'd like to be able to laze about all day without having anyone bother me. I thought of my animals, how happy and carefree they are. These people think that life is infinite. That the living things were probably once humans, maybe even relatives of ours. So we should treat them kindly. You have to take your time in the mountains. You have to slow down. Everything you do is purposeful. Every action is taken with a present-mindedness. One of the Bhutanese men in the book yelled at the wiener guy, telling him to get his nose out of his notebook so he could experience the world. Maybe if I'd spent a little more time listening, being deliberate and present, my chicken would have been so unhappy. This stuff really works. The people in Bhutan, their crime rate is so low that if I had actually gone to Bhutan, I'd be out of work. Unless I wanted to bust some hardcore vegetables. When I returned home from the mountains, I realized I have a lot of things that make me happy. My own personal Bhutan. It might be a little more crowded, there might be more traffic, and I might not have my chicken with me anymore. But I have an open mind that I'm present in my life's moments, and that makes me happy. I told you I was coming to check up on you. Look, I've done some work, and what I've realized... I know. I didn't actually need you to do that. My husband didn't actually run off to Bhutan. You needed to find happiness. Who are you? 
I'm your chicken.